Hello everyone, many thanks for watching this video. We're back to pick up where we left off, and in this tutorial, we're going to give you a recap of the troubleshooting tools we have discussed and introduce one solution for the connectivity issues we have faced so far. If you remember, after setting up our MTCNA home lab, we started with the ping and trace route diagnostic tools. Then, we monitored the ongoing traffic through our interfaces using Torch and finally, for more detailed information about the behavior of data packets throughout the network, we defined log rules in the form of firewall filters. In the second part of this video, we'll talk about the SourceNet, a solution that can help resolve possible network connectivity issues. After setting up the identity of our devices as well as the connections between them, we started troubleshooting our connections from the Class Access Point or R1. From the viewpoint of the Class AP, this is what the upstream and downstream networks look like. In order to test the connectivity of the Class AP, we need to send data packets to any of the target devices within each network. In this regard, we first came across the Internet Control Message Protocol or ICMP. ICMP is a supporting protocol that is used to send error messages and other operational information that tell you whether you have been able to communicate with another IP address or not. Apart from the ICMP protocol, the data packets being sent through the network have other information as well. They include source and destination addresses, the out interface that transmits the packets, and the in interface of the target device that will be receiving the packet. The most basic tool in our network troubleshooting arsenal is the ping. Ping is a software utility that tests the reachability of a host over an IP network. By sending echo requests and receiving their replies, the ping gives you error reports, packet loss, packet round trip time, and other basic statistical information. At the first stage, we pinged three IP hosts in our upstream network, namely our main internet switch, the global address of 8888 and the yahoo.com domain using the source address of 172.31.252.100 that was previously defined on the class AP. All three pings came back successfully as before. However, when we changed our source address to 10.00.254, all three pings failed and we did not receive any response from our target IP hosts. Next, to find more information about this issue, we turn to Traceroute. Traceroute is used to determine the routes and the transit delays of packets across an IP network. Using Traceroute, you can determine the number of queries to send per hop, the time to wait for a response, the limit on the number of hops and the port or interface used for sending the query. Just like what we did with the ping, we started sending trace packets from the class AP to the destination address of 8888 via the source address of 172.31.252.100. This trace came back successfully. However, when we used the source address of 10.00.254, our trace timed out and we did not receive any response. For the third network troubleshooting step, we used the torch. It is important to remember that unlike ping and trace routes, Torch does not generate or receive packets. It is only a monitoring tool that can be used to monitor the traffic flow through an interface. To use Torch, we first started an ongoing ping to the destination address of 8888 from the source address of 10.00.254 on the class AP, which kept timing out and was not returning any response. Then, we set up the Torch on our OUT interface, which was Ether1 to Internet. As expected, this interface started showing some transmission traffic, whereas the reception traffic rate stood at zero. However, when we changed the source address of our ping to 172.31.252.100, the same torch that was running and monitoring our out interface started showing both transmission and reception traffic. And finally, we refer to log which enables you to record and study various system events and a great deal of status information. By setting up log rules, you can monitor anything that happens within router OS, the records of which can be saved on any external or virtual memory. The basic information log entries contain are time and date, the topic of the log message, and the content of the message itself. 
An important point that was mentioned here was that the main log window in router OS does not have the ICMP protocol in its list of topics and we cannot set up a log for ICMP based packets from here. Therefore, the easiest way to monitor these packets is to define a log action in the form of a firewall filter rule. For this purpose, we set up three firewall filters with the log action. Number one, a forward log for ping packets passing through the class access point from the trainee router en route to the destination of 8888. Number two, an output log for ping packets generated by the class access point toward 8888. And number three, an input log to account for the responses being received by the class access point for each successful ping. As you can see here, our ping packets from the class access point were being sent from the source address of 172.31.252.100 and our log was recording one input for every single output. However, as soon as we restart the ping using the source address of 10.00.254, the ping gives timeouts and input log results stop meaning that once again, the source address of 10.00.254 on the class access point is not able to reach the address 8888. This brief review brings us to NAT, short for Network Address Translation, which is a method of mapping an IP address space into another space by changing network address information while your packets are moving through a router. If you're interested to know more, you can read about NAT in Microtech's router OS documentation. Let's see what NAT does. Imagine you're living on an island in South Atlantic. There, you have a local language that you use to communicate with the people around you and the residents of other cities on that island. Now, if you're planning a trip to a European country, for instance, you have two options. One, you should either speak the local language of that country or use an international language like English. Or two, you hire a translator to help you communicate with the locals. In router OS, NAT works as your translator. Let's see how. By referring to the IP menu and the firewall submenu, you can access NAT in the second tab and define new NAT rules. As we mentioned before, Firewall filters work based on a set of defined conditions or ifs and their consequent actions or thens. In here, the general tab allows you to determine some basic conditions. For the chain, we use SourceNAT and input the source address of 10.00.254 that has been experiencing disconnectivity. For the destination address, we leave the field blank, which means any and all destination addresses possible. In the Action tab, we select SourceNAT as the action and input the functioning source address of the class AP that is 172.31.252.100. This configuration basically means that we want router OS to translate 10.00.254 to 172.31.252.100. And just like that, our SourceNAT action is defined. If you recall, we were able to successfully ping 8888 from the source of 172.31.252.100 and the input and output results looked like this, in which ping packets and their replies moved between these two addresses. Now, let's try the source address of 10.00.254, which so far has only shown timeout results. As you can see, the ping from the source of 10.00.254 to 8888 is finally working. Let's have a closer look at the log records. For the output log, the packets are shown to be traveling from 10.00.254 to 8888. But unlike our previous ping, the NAT function is at work here meaning that the address 10.00.254 is first translated to 172.31.252.100 and it is only after this translation that the ping packets are sent to 8888. Similarly, for the input log, echo replies are coming from 8888 to 10.00.254 only after being translated into 172.31.252.100 and then passed on to 10.00.254. Now, going back to our network lab, our goal is to connect the trainee router to the internet. 
Do you think this source net has fulfilled this purpose? Let's check, shall we? If we run a ping to 8888 from the source address of 10001 on the trainee router, you can see that we're still getting timeout results. Also, if you refer to the log records on the class access point, you'll see that ping packets are being forwarded from 10001 to 8888, but we're not receiving any response. Well, that's because we specified only one single source address, that is 100254, in our source NAT conditions, which does not include 10001. Now, if we change our source address condition to 10000 forward slash 24, this means that we're including all source IP addresses in the IP range of 10000 to 100255. Now, if you stop and restart the same ping on the trainee router after about 10 seconds, you'll see that the ping from 10001 brings back successful results. Here's a question though. Why do we need to wait for 10 seconds and restart the ping? If you know the answer, write it in the comments section. Anyhow, if you now refer to the log records on the class access point, you can see that through the same NAT rule, the address 10001 is being translated into 172.31.252.100 and then the ping packets are reaching the destination of 8888. The same thing happens vice versa for the input ping replies. Okay, that's it. SourceNAT helped us resolve the connectivity issue on the class access point. For practice, see if you can carry out the same source NAT operations on the trainee router. And also, as a little experiment, try to use the masquerade solution to resolve this connectivity issue. Thank you very much for watching. In case you have any questions, make sure you post it in the comments section and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already to stay tuned for upcoming tutorials.